Let me show you how I managed to create a fishing lure with realistic details using only free software. And let me tell you, it wasn't easy at first, but it was totally worth it at the end. Over the past couple of years, I was using Fusion 360 to create all the 3D models I needed to print, including fishing lures. At the end of last year, while I was watching YouTube, I came across a video of a guy sculpting a realistic human face. And the first thought that came to my mind was, huh, this could totally work for making lures. So, starting this year, I decided to learn Blender, which is a free open source software that can do 3D modeling, animation, rendering, sculpting, and so much more. It can even edit videos. Because it can do so many things, it is one of the hardest pieces of software I have ever used. Even after a couple of weeks of using it, I still consider myself a beginner and I have a feeling that it will take way more than that to learn everything in it. When I launch Blender, I am greeted with a cube, a light and a camera. Usually I just delete them all and start by importing my reference image which in this case is an image of a European perch. I will start by modeling the base shape of the lure, similar to how you would make a wooden lure. The first step is always the side profile. I found the best way for me was to start with a plane, extrude it on the y-axis and scale it along the z-axis, then move it to place. I will keep repeating these steps until the side profile is done. Next, I switch to the top view, delete the vertices on one side and add a mirror modifier to make the model symmetric on the x-axis. Then I move and scale the edges till I'm happy with the shape. This is a bit different to how a form is created in Fusion 360. In Blender, when the basic shape is done, I have to apply a subdivision modifier to make it look smooth, but this will change the shape of the model. Then I have to keep adjusting the edges and vertices until I'm happy with the result. Then I have to apply all the modifiers and make sure that the scale and rotation are also applied which is very important or it could lead to lots of issues later. Now to achieve realistic details I will use a feature in Blender called Sculpting. I can add or remove material using a set of brushes that each has a unique effect and lots of settings. And if that isn't complicated enough I had to use another modifier called multi-resolution. It allows me to have multiple levels of resolutions, from low for basic shaping to dense for small details and things like scales. By the way, you can totally do sculpting using a mouse or a touchpad, but it's a lot better with a graphics tablet and a pen. You will have more control over the handling and the strength of your brush. And you don't need an expensive top-of-the-line tablet, I'm using the Wacom Intius S, which is one of the cheapest options from Wacom. And it's working great. I tried different techniques to make the gills. I found that the best way that works for me is to use the simple draw brush to carve the shape then by holding shift or switching to the smooth brush I can smooth out one side of the carving and blend it with the body. The result I get from doing this looks similar to what you get when carving wooden lures and then sanding them smooth. And while I'm working I keep looking at multiple reference images from different angles to be more accurate. But keep in mind, I'm still a beginner at sculpting, so it might not turn out super accurate, but I think I did well.
Here I'm using the same technique to form the shape of the lips. Then I switch to the inflate brush, which does exactly what it says it does, inflate things. I use it to make some parts stand out. Of course, I'm looking at the reference images and checking out the areas that have highlights or shadows to know which areas are higher than others. Another brush I frequently use is the crease brush. I use it on the edges of the gills to make them look a bit sharper. To create the fins, I first use the brush called layer to add a layer of material where the fin should be. I'm not sure if I should have sticked to the same technique that I used for the gills or this is better. Both work. But this way the fin is more obvious, which I guess is better for 3D printing. Then using the draw and draw sharp brushes, I started drawing the lines on the fin. I think it came out okay, maybe a bit too much, but it's fine considering I'm still a beginner. I'm almost done with the detailing, but I'm still missing a very important detail, the scales. There are lots of ways to add scales in Blender, maybe we can explore them in a different video. But since I'm already sculpting, I decided to make an alpha map and add it to one of the sculpting brushes, which is a really handy feature. To create this alpha map, I will be using another free open source software called Inkscape. Alpha maps are grayscale images, black is zero which means no change at all, white is the maximum amount of change, and all the shades of grey are in between them. I will start by making a semicircle, stretching it out a bit on the y-axis, changing its color to a gradient that goes from black to a shade of grey. Then by using a feature of Inkscape called Tiled Clones, I fill the entire image with these circles, making sure the image is seamless. Meaning if you place two of these images side by side or on top of each other, they will look as one with no visible line in the middle. This is very important to get clean results. Then I export it as a PNG file. Back in Blender, I switch to the layer brush, adjust the brush height, add the image I just created as a texture, and now the brush will start drawing scales. What I love about this way of adding scales is that I can easily change the size or the height of the scales. Also, I can create a bunch of alpha maps and use them across multiple projects. I want to make sure that the scales are applied only to the body and not the fins or the head. To do that, I have to draw a mask around them. Or what I can do is draw a mask around where I want the scales to be and then invert it. After drawing the mask, inverting it and smoothing it out, I switch back to my layer brush, increase its size and draw the scales. At this point, I should have reverted the change and modified the mask a bit to remove some of the scales at the top and the bottom. But it's fine considering this my first lure in Blender. To wrap up the sculpting phase, I applied the multi-resolution modifier and now I'm ready to make the eye sockets and other hardware. For the eye sockets, I created a cylinder, positioned it on the head where I want the eyes to be, added a mirror modifier to make sure they are symmetric, and using the boolean modifier, I cut out the eye sockets. I use the same method for making the hook hangers and the line tie. The only difference is there is no need for the mirror modifier here, which I hope is uh, obvious. 
Again, using the same method, I added two internal cavities for the weights. I will be adding three 6mm steel balls to each cavity during the printing process. To give the lure more buoyancy, I decided to add one more cavity at the top. Its main purpose is to trap air in it and decrease the overall density of the lure. This will make it float and swim better, hopefully. And that's it for the modeling part. It wasn't easy, but considering how hard to use this software can be, I'm very happy with what I was able to do. And I enjoyed making it, especially the sculpting part. I printed the lure on my Bamboo Lab P1S with ABS filament using a 0.4mm nozzle. But most of the details were smoothed out and that's because of the width of the nozzle. So I printed it again but this time I switched to a 0.2mm nozzle and it turned out to be a lot better. I had to switch the filament color because the silver filament was clogging the small nozzle. Unfortunately, I can't test the lures because of the extremely cold weather. Maybe in a couple of months I will make a video where I test all the lures I made. But overall, I love how this lure came out. Even if it wasn't exactly how I wanted it to be, I was able to make better gills and fins compared to what is possible in CAD software like Fusion 360. If you want to support this channel and get access to all the files, check out my printables account in the description below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have an idea about a fishing lure you want to see me make, add it in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.